the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm pleased to have former Black Flag bassist, Emmy Award-winning dialogue editor, and current bassist for the band Dose, Kira Rossler. How you doing, Kira? I'm doing okay, Eric. How are you? I'm great. Tell me briefly, how did the Minute Flag EP come about, and what are some fond memories you have from that session? Well, again, we were certainly doing a 48-hour mm-hmm. lockout with, like, Loose Nut or something at the same time. So I remember the uh, the guys showing up, and again, we were trying to do basic tracks, so it would be Mike and George with me and Bill, and, uh, and D. Boone and Greg wouldn't have even been playing. We were trying to lay down some, some basic tracks from which to build the... Uh, songs so fond memories i i think whenever this is my experience whenever jams are attempted especially when they're attempted under the gun of like we gotta come on we gotta knock out some jams Mm -hmm. like i said about playing live and trying to jam whenever i'm in that situation it never goes well so it was like okay somebody like come up with a cool idea you know and it just you know it didn't like so so i think d D boone maybe came up came in with the fetch the water song which is the one sort of song song that is on that record and then uh the rest of it was sort of mediocre (laughs) jamming attempts you know that i mean mike is a very particular kind of bass player so the two bass thing i mean we developed over time that capacity but we we did not have that capacity and we were supposed to be coming up with it you know right then and there and Mike was sort of used to having a very wide berth as a bass player and so he didn't want to give me a wide berth mm-hmm. and you know so there was a lot of sort of push and pull and give and no give and take and um, this doesn't sound good and that, you know what I remember is it was very hard and being unsatisfied and and being limited on time so that we couldn't even you know tinker tinker we just had to uh sort of it'll have to do (laughs) so um that's that's my memory of that what are your thoughts on the raymond pettibone artwork that graced the black flag album covers and we're going to start off with 1984's family man Raymond I I don't get Raymond's sense of humor like like uh, I wish I was smart enough and dark enough sometimes to go there (laughs) and sometimes I just feel like I can't quite get there you know but but this idea of laying it out visually is is it's just foreign to me I, I i look at it and i go yeah that says something to me but, but but when i try to project myself doing visual art i can't imagine the saying that okay let's go into slip it in now i know you have an opinion about slip it in the cover of slip it in so hit me with that so right because slip it in was like i said the first record that i felt any kind of ownership like okay here's my record you know and then I see the cover and I'm like wow well if I they feel this way (laughs) about women but you know a I got over that pretty fast just in general but b it's Raymond (laughs) and Raymond may feel that way about women but that's not who asked me to join the band but also I think he is expressing something there he's doing the same thing what Helen Killer is doing with her wild you know eyes and her cat you know he's do he's expressing his punk rock you know and in that way when you say okay this is his punk rock music you know this is uh an expression of that then with religion and 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 pressing against women and and, you know and this this sort of i don't know pushing against what should be you know what's comfortable and acceptable and being totally unacceptable um, makes total sense it is punk rock did you see henry rollins as a frequent target of violent audience members while on tour and how did you deal with that i think i was lucky that way i didn't see i know he went through a lot of it but i didn't see a lot of instances 
personally. I know it happened. But uh, during the time that I was in the band, we didn't have a lot of really bad audience conflicts. What intrigued you most about Mike Watt during the Black Flag Minutemen tour of 1984? I mean, I saw the Minutemen lots of times in LA, so it wasn't the tour per se, but the fact that Mike was such a big part of that band, he was a songwriter, He his sound was big and fat in the band, there was space for him and stuff, so that's of course intriguing because bass players, yeah, you know, so so that was a lot of it. His personality is very um, quirky and endearing, you know, and he comes off as a, you know, kind of a lovable, freaky kind of guy, and so, so that was attractive on a personal level, and then, you know, musically, he's just he writes bass all over everything he does. What's not to like? Um, what made you want to pursue a career in sound editing? I was working in the corporate world doing uh, pro computer programming, and I was kind of miserable in the corporate world, and I met a guy uh, through my brother. My brother was composing music for a student film who was doing sound for, at that time, student films, but he had a little sound company, and I sort of twisted his arm to let me come work for him from you know and started at the absolute bottom and just sort of worked uh, my way up in his little company and then eventually you know kept getting better and better gigs was it important for you to win an oscar for best sound editing for the film mad max fury road well to be clear i don't have the hardware <laughs> the way the oscars work is it's given to the sound supervisor uh so even though the team uh you know, it was for the editing of the team, the supervisor gets it. So so the team won the award and it and it meant a lot to me because well all of the projects were expected to, to put so much into them. So um, so to have something actually to show for the effort that went into them is is it's really nice to be acknowledged. How did you and Mike Watts bass duo Dose come about? When Dee Boone died, I was uh, in Florida visiting my mom, and I uh, and it was so gut wrenching not to be able to be there. So I, I thought a lot about whether there was anything I could do, and 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 I had in mind this idea of of you know, well I got to get him playing, I got to keep him playing because he'll quit. So when I got home, I just uh, you know I I went to his house and and. And, and that was just my focus, to get him to play. And so I had some material, but we did some jams. It was just anything to get him to play. And, and there was never any goal other than that. And it's funny when that happens, right? You just, you don't mean to make a band that lasts 30 years, but, but that's all that happened. What's next for Kira? Well, obviously my sound career, it continues to be a large part of my life bass will always be a part of my life like we talked about mostly i just compose and write uh, and record these days i don't uh, play live really i just do recording stuff and uh getting married at the end of september congratulations thank you and uh you know i live a quiet life and like it that way and kira who did your makeup today Eric Blair, blaring out. Kara Rossler, thank you so much for being on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. You rock. You rock. <laughs> All right, this is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with Kira Rossler signing off. The Blaring Out show.